Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. I'm going to start on a, on a sad note. We will not linger here, but I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, this is from Caden on Instagram. You probably won't see this, Adam, but I decided to send it anyway. As you may have heard, there was a shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. I attend this school. Just wanted to let you know that this SDP and all y'all are doing uh, is helping me through this terrible time. Please keep all my classmates and teachers in your prayers. And that, my friend, we will do. Um, oh, my God. You didn't tell me. No, no, I didn't Holy. want to tell you beforehand. Yeah, so that's, um, I'm, first off, we are sorry uh, for, for everything that anybody that was affected by it yesterday went through. Whether you watched it on TV and were affected, or as we were, uh, or you physically went through it yourself like Caden did. Um, remember that you can do something about this, and I'm not going to get political, and I'm not going to tell you what you can do. But to sit back and do nothing is clearly not working. And thoughts and prayers and condolences also don't work. They're nice, but they don't work. So figure out what you can do in your community to stop this from happening. We hope this never, ever happens again. Although, quite frankly, I'm not very confident in that. And uh, we wish you all the best. Everybody in Florida, everybody in the United States. And uh, let's turn a corner on this one, shall we? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on to actual hockey, which is what the show is all about. It's it's amazing how much like real life um, makes hockey seem like it doesn't matter at <laughs> right? all. Because, Even the Olympics. Well, like while while you were saying all that, like I had started to look up how many of Milan Lucic's penalties were minors versus majors, <laughs> and I stopped giving a shit very quickly. <laughs> I was like, oh, that doesn't matter I at have to all. Say, that's why I like doing this show because we can get into intense, heated debates about stuff that ultimately doesn't matter, and. And, you know, I mean, it matters to me that the Leafs win and that they go and win a cup. That that matters to me. I want that to happen. But at the end of the day, it's sports. That's why we love it. It's our escape. Well, and the Leafs are going to win a cup um, mm-hmm. using the patented style that they used yesterday. That's <laughs> how you win. Well, hang on. That's we, how you win. We're going to start with blogger. We're going to start with the Olympics. We're starting with the oh, Olympics. Okay. But oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yesterday's game. Woo. Um, okay. Quickly, I want to quickly mention uh, both the men's and women's Canadian teams. The game to watch was the Canadian Olympic uh, women and the American Olympic women going at, at it. Because and it was on at a reasonable time. It was, yeah. That's why you should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and Megan Augusta and Sarah Nurse saved us, so shout out to them. Because seriously, I think the Americans totally outplayed us. The Olympics are always um, like a unique experience. Yeah. You know? And I actually have enjoyed like waking up every day and there's... Fresh news always and stuff happening. Like the second you wake up, there's a game on. Better turn it on. Better watch something over breakfast. It's cool. Yeah, I like that. Nice. I like it. Um, the uh, uh, the other thing is uh, Canadian men took on Switzerland. They won six to nothing. Uh, and I couldn't help but look at uh, Wojtek uh, Wolski's uh, goal and think, man, it was so good. Like I know Switzerland's not great, and I know they're especially not, you know, without without any NHL players, I know they're less great as everybody else is, but yeah, this is still a competitive team that mostly yeah, mostly would have been here anyway, right? And that's what, yeah, what I was gonna say. And the, and I th- I thought with uh Wolski's goal, I thought I'm like, man, that looks NHL to me. I wonder if some of these guys oh. get a second look after this tournament. I yep, I bet so. Uh I think that'll be the case. It'd be I mean, it'd be a really easy way to get some scouting done. This is the best of the this is when was the last time there was a tournament that was strictly just the best players in the world, not in the NHL. That's it. Not Lillehammer, ninety two. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember. remember ninety four, whatever that so, was. So I mean, surely there are players there. Um, and I mean, uh, it's funny. A lot of guys don't make the NHL for very specific reasons, like. Mm-hmm. Brandon Cozen, I guess they didn't think was big enough, and maybe they thought, I don't know, something about his defensive game or whatever, but, like, the speed was always there. Mm-hmm. Shots there, <laughs> offensive in- instincts. Yeah. Wolski's a bigger guy. Um, I don't know. I, f- I feel like it might have been his contract or something like that, but, like, a lot of those guys, like, they have NHL shots mm-hmm. and all this stuff. I remember someone was telling me a story of a conversation they had with Ben Scrivens where, you know, he had only been in the minors gets called up to practice with the Leafs and he was even remarking like at practice with the Leafs who were bad and fringe NHLers themselves going, Holy shit. Do they rip it? 
<laughs> like they puck, rip yeah. it up there. Yeah. So there's a there's a huge jump up between the uh, NHL and the AHL. I don't think it's always as subtle as people think. Oh, just call up the guy on your first line in the AHL team. It'll be fine. Are you guys over not having NHLers there now that it started? No, it's it's dumb, but like as a fan, it's fresh. Yeah, it's, it's kind of something. Cool. It's neat, and we know that it won't happen next time. It's, it's neat, but it's still slightly annoying. Yeah. Oh, it's it's fully it's annoying it's... no matter what. You know what? Team North America was amazing. Next time, if they have it, will it be as amazing, or will I be like, this isn't cute anymore? I don't think they'll do it again. I don't think they're going to do a team Europe and team still North America. Qualify for it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, so would McDavid. Yeah. So would McDavid. Yeah, so <laughs> we was... could put Matthews and McDavid on the same line uh, again. That's amazing. Um, and Leon Dreisaitl. Would not really. Not no. Almost. He's German. So it's almost. so it's a, still a little annoying. Yeah, it so is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Here's the oh, thing. Yeah. The one thing is that when you watch like the women's game, it's like best of the best, mm-hmm. and that's what the Olympics should be. You know, I know it started out as an amateur sport, but if you really look into the Olympics beginnings, the reason that they brought the Olympics back and the guy that founded them wanted to found the Olympics to keep the poor people out. And the reason that he did this. What year was this? This what? was in the early 1900s. This is a guy. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy. Is this, in Rome? How do you, <laughs> this is It's crazy. The, the history of the Olympics, you should look up. It's amazing. My par- okay. My parents read me the Berenstein Bears when I was a child. What did they read you? I want to know. <laughs> Same thing. Same All right, thing. so here's a history of North America, 1900 to 1920. It's the, here's the basic <laughs> premise. It, and so the famine. <laughs> the basic premise was that only amateur athletes could compete. And, and for years and years and years, the Olympics has used that. The original reason that rule was instituted was because it could keep poor people out. The only people who could afford to be amateur athletes their entire lives were people from rich families. Mm-hmm. Which is still kind of the case. Which is still kind of the because... case, but there are sponsors now, right? Yes, so you can yes, get around yes. that. Um, so the winter Olympics are always great because they, it's like, they have to find the broke one. Yeah. So here's the broke one. Let's tell their great story. The summer Olympics is full of it, but like any winter sport is expensive. You know, who's the best at telling those stories? The Americans. Oh, I was going to mm. say CBC. CBC's good. CBC's Olympic coverage is, is great. Really good. But I, I feel like the Americans, I think Americans just, they, they're just great at storytelling in general in everything. Look at the NFL. It's all stories, man. Look at the NBA. It's all stories. It's it's like the NBA is like a, an episode of Real Housewives, man. It is just dramatic right now. They hype it up. Like, they I'm hype... always amazed how many times I'm like, oh, the Leafs play the Sens tonight? Yeah. Yeah, because I've been hearing I mean? about LeBron and Isaiah Thomas all day in yeah. Canada. In the NBA, it's like, oh. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 So, like, I think it's. it's um... So, yeah. Uh, Stephen didn't let you finish your story. Yeah, my bad. Oh, well, well, the, the history of the Olympics. The, yeah. So the, okay. so, the whole reason that that <laughs> happened. So. While it's nice, <laughs> while it is nice to to have this amateur athlete thing that hangs over the Olympics, um, the real the real what the real Olympics should be and what they're becoming, I think, are a um, are a, uh, a, a it should be a tournament of the best of the best, right? So ultimately, we know that these guys are not the best hockey players in the world. However. They're pretty freaking amazing. They're in the top one percentile of hockey players in the world. And it is kind of cool to watch. Although every time I do watch, I think, okay, but the NHL is not here. I watch and I think the NHL is not here. When I watch the women's game, I'm like, these are the best. Mm -hmm. This is the best of the best. This is not a tournament that with a, you know, with a, a special story around it. This is the, except for, you know, the women themselves. This is a, these are the best women, period. And so, like, and, and, you know, and what I loved about the Team Canada, Team USA game yesterday was they don't like each other. They play each other all the time, and they don't yeah. like each other. Everything I've ever heard is that that's super real. Yeah. It's super real. There was a ad, I want to say Bauer, and it had uh, Hillary Knight and Marie Philippe Poulin in it. And they were, like, acting friendly. And I was like, that's weird. I wonder if that was difficult. I mean, you do take two of the friendliest athletes on the face of the planet. I'm sure it's not when you're in that setting. But if you're on the ice, all bets are off. Game face on, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wickenheiser. Like, I I think, I feel like it used to be worse, but it's still very bad. I heard this one story where there was almost like a parking lot fight. That's awesome. (laughs) That would be sick. Yeah, they don't like each other. (laughs) They don't like each other. What's what's been weird about the getting back to the, the men's side and best versus best and all that? Um, how many people will be like, well, it's not best versus best, so I don't want to watch. Oh, and then no, World Juniors come, and they're like, can't wait. <laughs> can't wait. What What are you talking about? The Olympics, the men's, uh, the Canadian men's Olympics 
B and C team kill the Canadian World Juniors. They do. Pros but it's the best of that age, though. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Like, do you ne- do you never go to OHL? It's not, it's I don't not really know if you your, your point is that valid. Here. It's pretty valid. It's pretty valid. <laughs> it's not have you ever gone to an OHL game? Is it as valid as his sweater? That's what I would like to know. Is it as valid as Steve's sweater? No, no, no. I said what's it's a valid sweater. It's on this. No, I'm just. What is wrong with Steve's sweater? Nothing. I said it's valid. What? It's a green sweater. I think it's a nice sweater. And it looks like Steve's about 54. <laughs> but I, I knew there was a problem when at Mrs. Daniel's birthday someone went, Oh, that from uh, Eddie Bauer? And I was like, Oh, is it? Well, you know what? No, it's not. <laughs> Where, I would have, I could have thought it was from old, Club Monaco. Apparently, elderly Navy. Old, old than E. Old than E. Navy. It looks like it. You know? <laughs> I gotta wear this to puck talk tonight. Should I throw it out? Should I throw it in the garbage before I go? No, well, I think you could it's... wear something from like this century. <laughs> wow, wow! I have a hot date with JD Bunkus, and now I gotta take this off. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. Thanks for that. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I mean, it's, it's fun. It is fun to watch. I just think it's, it again. The Olympics should always be best on best. However, however, we know that that's not going to be the case for long because we know they're going to China. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, you, know, you know what's going to be great is seeing all the, the the prick waving that goes on with China because they already said, well, you can't skip Korea. If you skip Korea, you're not coming to China. Yeah, like Renan Fis- yeah, Fisal is going to no. turn that down. <laughs> and the NHL is going to have to be like, listen, we'll make a shitload of money together. Just stop being stubborn. And they'll have to be like, no. <laughs> and then I'll have to take the NHL side and vomit. Are, is the next <laughs> Olympic fun? <laughs> is the le- next Olympic scheduled um, after the next collective bargaining, bargaining agreement? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I so, imagine okay. if it's scheduled. Ma- imagine it happens during during the lockout. Yeah, <laughs> and then the, the NHL players can just do whatever the hell they want yeah. at that point, right? That'd be awesome. But then the NHL would. I bet you they would try to hold something over the Olympics. Like we're gonna start the season mid Olympics. Oh, for sure. <laughs> mid Olympic. Can you imagine that right before the medal round? Mm. Well then, just, I'll do it. I'd be like, I'll see you in a few games. Then <laughs> we'll suspend you. Oh, okay, millions of You'll dollars. You'll suspend me. That's okay. illegal. You can't do that. You cannot do that. You can't do that. No way. Yeah, but arbitration or something. Yeah. other boring words. They'll find a way. They'll How find a... are you telling me lawyers won't find a way to litigate? It's awful. Like it's all <laughs> awful and boring and not hockey. Let me just Good watch. Good thing none of that is real, so we don't have to stress about it. Yeah, we won't, it. and I, it's not. I definitely just had an out loud shower argument. <laughs> yeah, one of those ones in your head. I'm gonna, I'm gonna defeat this person in this conversation, and then you do it all in your head. And, and then like, what I'm gonna say? Yeah. <laughs> you know how many of those I have behind the wheel with the car in front of me? Oh yeah. It's I'm, I'm so, so glad that everyone got to experience you have that with Renee Fessel. Right <laughs> the jury store cult. <laughs> Renee, Hi, Renee. You're, being, you're being obtuse, Renee. You're making me take Gary's side here. Come on. That's what I sound like. I always um, call my enemies obtuse. Uh, how many people got fooled That's by acute. fake Bob McKenzie and fake Darren Dreger accounts last night after Gardner was fooled from the game? Is that a thing? Oh, my, oh yeah. Like, there's a TSN Bob McKenzie, but it's with a J. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of an I E, it's a J E. So it both of them tweeted. I think it's the same person, mm. and they probably are having fun. Man, go study, <laughs> go shovel an elderly neighbor's driveway. But go do anything but what you're doing with your life. I'm gonna read you a, tw- uh, a Facebook message. I would never run a fake insider account. It's very, it's sort of funny to see the replies though, the freakout accounts. It's, it's great. But my favorite thing was a Facebook post from a guy I used to work with who literally does You me. used to work with I used to work with this guy okay. and he has he, he doesn't he's not in the industry or anything. Uh and he doesn't Was this a short Wait, drug mark guy? No, well no, he he was at one point. And uh he he has nothing to do with hockey. And listen to how he he labels this. I'm I'm turning my computer away so you can't read it beforehand. This is his Facebook status update that I that is still sitting here this morning. Could be wrong, but I'm hearing Jay Gardner of the Blackhawks for Brent Seabrook. I'm waiting on details. <laughs> why that was his so, Facebook update. Why did he say that? He's not a hockey insider. He's just a guy. <laughs> so was he doing that just to mess with his friends? No, no. He saw the Bob McKenzie fake account last night. And then, 
Somebody went on to 365news.com, which you can basically make up any news story that looks like a blog post. And they put Gardner going to the Blackhawks because, of course, Dion Phaneuf was held out the night before when he was traded. So people assumed that Gardner was traded mm-hmm. uh, when he went down with a, a spasm or whatever he had. And so <laughs> my favorite, I just love the wording. I'm going to read it one more time. Could be wrong, but I'm hearing Jake Gardner, the Blackhawks for Brent Seabrook and waiting on details. Thanks, you, random. Are you personally waiting on those details? Thanks, random dude. <laughs> I heard. By the way, I heard is useless. By the way, uh, Milan Lucic to the Coyotes for anti Ranta. You just heard it. (laughs) Jake Gardner to the Vancouver Canucks for Brock Besser. You just heard it. Uh, And you're waiting on details. Yep, Max Pacioretty. Yeah, I'm waiting for details, such as reality. (laughs) Um, Max Pacioretty to the Calgary Flames for Mike Smith. You just heard it. I have a tweet to read. You didn't hear it from a reliable source, but you heard it. I have a tweet to read. Please do. I would love to hear it. It says, so, is Gardner hurt? Anyone know how bad? Because trading him seems unlikely. That was me. That was Adam Wilde. Mentioning trading him yeah. is adding fuel to the fire, Adam. So that's my fault? I think that's a lot of your well, fault. Well, at that point, at how that many point followers of the game, do you have? Uh, Too many. Not, a, not enough to make <laughs> a difference in the 20, hockey world. 26.7K. You mentioning Jake Gardner in a tweet? Yeah, and but then I'm not an insider. Trading <laughs> question mark? Adam, oh, you're and then do... you sit here and you scold this man for a Facebook update? <laughs> because I'm like, not how the... many friends does he have? A couple hundred, maybe? Because I you hadn't have heard. 26,000 people following you, <laughs> and you're asking if Jake Gardner is traded. Well, if you search Jake Gardner trade, you'll be one of the top of the people. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> you son of a gun. Guys. Number one, yeah, I'm not a hockey great. insider, and I was not waiting to hear yeah, back on details. Podcast. And I hadn't heard that Drake, Jake Gardner was traded. Number two, Jake Gardner was traded. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who said that? Adam <laughs> Wilde just did. He has 26,000 followers. He must be legit. He's oh verified on Twitter. He's verified. We're at Sportsnet right now. Let's march down the hall and confirm this with, the, call other, them. with the other insiders. No. <laughs> we can go live from this studio. We can override the fan feed. Do you know right how to now. do that? Yes. That is not cool. Yeah. So it probably not go well. Trade announcement. Let's do Jake it. Jake Gardner. Where's he going, Adam? We do the wrong stinger. <laughs> Trade center. <laughs> Hi, this is Jay, and I'm Dan. <laughs> so anyway, Jake Gardner to the Jets. True. Woo? <laughs> no, you know it'd be more confusing. Jake Gardner to the Jets. Malkin? <laughs> you heard it here first. Jay and Dan. Da-da-da. Da-da-da. Uh, anyway. Go to three, fault, if you want to, if you want to fake your friends out, three six five news dot com, and you can make it any story. It's amazing. And I'm Jen. <laughs> you don't imagine oh, Jake yeah. Gardner. Bang. Bang. Winnipeg Jet. <laughs> Traded. <laughs> Traded. <laughs> Bang. Done. <laughs> Jakey and the Jets. One nothing Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. What, Darren Petition? Oh, I miss it so much. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> um, okay. Leafs do win. They get outshot. But apparently what? the... I know. <laughs> that is the second highest shots taken by a goalie with a win in Leafs history. The first was Mike Palmatier in 1977. He defaced 56 shots that he saved. Uh, Anderson was at 54. Wow. Now, what's interesting about this <laughs> is, and, and Chris Johnston alluded to this, and I wish there was more information on it because I'm not, I don't have any access to it because all the um, all the great stat sites have been bought up by the teams. But um, apparently, a lot of those, and I'm not saying all of them, are bad. A lot of them no, were sorry. low percentage shots. Now, mm. there were. Something like midway through the third period, they announced. I think Greg Millen on the broadcast said about 20, 20 scoring chances for Columbus. That's still a lot. Twenty Jeez. scoring chances is insane. Yeah. Versus ten for the Leafs. However, it is interesting when you put it in perspective of fifty-four shots. Maybe they have twenty-one, twenty-two that are actual scoring chances. The rest, because Tortorella is, I, I believe, their thing right now is fire as many shots then as you can. Well, and it should have been against. Should, and it should be against anybody, really. But so poised. Like seeing him in person, I, I know it's not much different from TV, but like oh, it's huge. It, uh, it's yeah, very different. You think? Okay, yes. well, I didn't want to be the one to say it. Oh. I'm brilliant because I got to see the game live. No, but he's just so poised. Like if if Freddie Anderson sees the puck, I know he's going to stop it. That's how it is these days. It's not. Nope, just checked. It's not October, so he'll stop it. Yeah. Yep. 
He was so poised. Um, but being there, it didn't. I, mean, I looked up at the shot clock like just before the end of the second. I'm like 37. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, a lot. It didn't feel that way at all. Well, it, well I, I don't know no, if you guys I read it. TV it did. did. Yeah. It did? Yeah. You know, especially, you know, when in yeah. the third, it was like. The third was bad. It was just all Columbus all the time it was, when I was watching. It was that crazy. Yeah, that um, was bad. But yeah. they also had the lead. But I was looking like up to that point in the second. I remember being like, okay, Columbus has had a lot of the shots lately. I'll just look up and what? Mm. And it was like triple what the Leafs had. And. I knew Columbus had an advantage. I didn't think it was that crazy. Mm. A Grand Canyon. Hey, you know all about <laughs> I don't that. I know, because if you think about how the game started, it was all Columbus, and then the Leafs got a goal. You know? And then it, uh, and I don't know all... if I thought that either. Uh-huh. All the way to get, wait, the first five minutes? Yeah, yeah the Dominic, first five minutes. I missed the Dominic first five Moore. minutes. Oh, okay. Why? Well, the stupid like... Don Valley Parkway. Mm. Oh, everyone did. Get to the game also? Everyone did. Oh, if wow. you look at the stands, there were probably a lot of empty seats. Because we accident? were in late. Uh, no, it was just rainy and shitty. <laughs> and February. There, yeah. A lot of uh, empty seats. And when we had not even gotten up to our seats, there was still a lineup of people getting in. So, yeah, I missed the first one. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, it feel was like, bad, I, guess? I feel like that was how the whole game went. It was okay. Columbus is peppering them with shots. Leafs go the other end. They score a goal. Oh. Columbus comes back, gets a whole bunch of shots. Leafs go the other end, get a goal. So, that's kind of. So, I was in my seat less than a minute and Kadri scored. So, I was like, well, they're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what did stand out to me was that the Leafs defense, especially without Gardner in the lineup, and given he plays probably the most, he's played the most minutes of any defenseman. However, Morgan Riley sat out a few games. Right. Um, he is their highest scoring defenseman. He's he's a big part of the, the defensive core. When and he's so hot recently. Yeah, when he's crazy. out. Yeah, he's at 13 points in 10 games or something. Something like crazy. that. Yeah, crazy amount of assists. Um, when he's out, it's a lot, especially when you've got Polak in the lineup. Who, by the way, is not on rotation with Carrick. I believe Carrick, no. Carrick didn't play last game either. I don't think he played on Monday. I think we've misunderstood. or uh, General people and Mike Babcock have a different interpretation of the word rotation. We see rotation as Carrick in, Carrick out. Carrick in, Carrick out. No, that's not how he looks at it. It's like Carrick 3, Polak 3, oh, Polak okay. 2, Carrick 2. Like, it, I don't know. Carrick, Mike... Might play next game, might not. See, that's that's gonna be very interesting because uh, Gardner is a lefty. Mm-hmm. Like that might not even affect Carrick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's an injury on defense. He might not even get Justin the call. Hall lefty. Nope. Hall, that is sorry. Um, Valley is a lefty. Uh, well, Borgman. I'll bring up Borgman. He looked like he got injured, but he's healthy. So I mean, Borgman makes easily the most sense. Do you put? Polak and Borgman together on that on that last pair. Why not? Familiarity. See, I would put Zaitsev and... with Borgman because at least with Zaitsev, there's a lot. I mean, Borgman's not slow, but there's some foot speed on both in there. Zaitsev and Borgman has always made sense to me. It's just the couple times they've tried it, they sucked. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> so, enough. I mean, I, I no, I want to see it again. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got the Leafs have the wiggle room. They can experiment a little bit. They're up to 59 games. It's not slowing down. It's until inter- March. Yeah, really. It's interesting. Can the Leafs just have, like, the first two weeks of April off <laughs> while the rest of the teams finish out their schedule? Holy shit. Yeah, it's insane. Um, so what was interesting about Columbus was that, you know, they're they're now a point out, as they were last episode of the playoffs. Had they won last night, they'd be in. And they look like a team that should be in the playoffs. They should be in the playoffs. But they've got the league's worst power play. And you got to think with those weapons, how do you have – the 31st power play worse than the Montreal Canadians who in 36% of their games this year have only scored one goal. I wonder how what, do you have the, yeah, Andrew, Andrew Berkshire tweeted that last night. Wow. One goal or less. One goal or less. Or less. <laughs> yeah. So now this wow. is, this is uh... <laughs> how do you have the 31st power play with Seth Jones and Zach Rowinski? And Nick Foligno too. Like, I mean, Nick, that's, yeah, that's a good player. It's not like a premier star, but he's, he's a good player. Um, or Timmy Pernard. Or Timmy Pernard. I was I was looking at um I was I don't know, this is probably not the best way to put it, but a lot of a lot of the stats put a crazy amount of emphasis on five on five hockey. And that's when most hockey happens. Mm-hmm. And well, I you don't hope think, anyway. Yeah, and it's probably the best <laughs> indicator of you putting together the best possible team, but like 
look at uh, the power play is currently sinking Columbus's season yep. potentially. Yep. The penalty kill is sinking the Oilers, mm-hmm. who are otherwise having a decent-ish season. <laughs> so, and look at the Leafs. People keep talking about, oh, you know, this night they got caved in, that night, that night. Their power play is good, and their penalty kill is one of the best in the league. I don't know. You're you're taking away um, an opportune time to score. I don't know. That's, that sounds pretty valuable sounds like, to me. Sounds like good defense to me. It's something. I don't know what to call it. Well, and maybe they're still allowing more shots against... Uh, on the penalty kill than other teams, and they're they just surely take them. more. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, don't know what to th- I can't believe Corpus Allo stopped Hyman last night. Oh man! Oh my God! What a save! That Count was me in as one of the people on that half of the arena who went, yeah. <laughs> wow! I thought it was in. I freaking thought it was in. I was of course, on that half I've, of the arena. I from I from my couch was said the same thing. Jesse, you look like you want to say something. Is there something you want to add? Uh, no, go ahead. Keep going. No, come on. What? Jesse looks at me. He's got like how a I, lion looks at a freaking gazelle. I have nothing to add. That's not this true. Bullshit, That's so. not true. But he's holding well, back. What's up next, Adam? He's uh, well, buttering me up. What I was going to go <laughs> with buttering was, me up. it seems like the Leafs... Like and, the and, weasel from Bugs Bunny. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Felino said the Leafs' defense looked tired. They did look tired. Well, so the question is, is it fatigue on... Is it fatigue for one game because... Gardner was out and they had to, they had to do it by, you know, like, I mean, Dermot even said one of his giveaways that led to a goal was because of fatigue. Is it fatigue that they can handle for next game? Or is this long-term fatigue where, you know, they've been trying to avoid this with the forwards, but maybe with the defense, they haven't. Is it time to, you know, take a couple games, get some, rotate some fresh bodies in there. And I mean, Mike Babcock rotates some fresh bodies in there. So for a couple games, someone sits down, they, they, you know, Morgan Riley, for lack of a better term here, had somewhat of a, a rest. I wouldn't call it a total rest because you're working. But is it? do you give guys a couple days? If you've got a 20-point lead on the next team, even though you're going for first, your forwards are red hot. You've got defense who can come in, you know, with Justin Hall at least, and, uh, God, even Martin Marinson if you need to, come in and mm-hmm. just and be fresh. And, and Andreas Borgman. It's a great idea. I don't think they would ever do it. I don't know. I mean, they won't even use the guys they have. Like the NBA does that all the time. Well, they sit their stars wouldn't towards Josh, the end. Wouldn't Josh Levo love to be in the NBA? By the way, on my way in late, like I'm listening to the anthems playing, standing in line, uh, Josh Levo walked by. Oh, really? <laughs> I was like, I guess he's not playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, one thing that has changed the look of this team is, is Kadri and Marner. And Marlowe, too. Holy mackerel. And people are not giving Marlowe the credit. But let me just say, Patrick Marlowe, a in, in ten games has six points, which is pretty impressive. Remember, Absolutely. the guy's thirty-eight. Mm. He's got nineteen goals on the season. He's not getting paid like a well, but he's thirty-eight. Fair enough. But his points are good. My point is, he's always in position, mm-hmm. and Kadri and Marner are always looking for each other. And to me, Austin Matthews, William Nylander, and Kadri and Marner are terrifying. And that's the kind of thing you can keep together for five or six years at this point. And they had a like a weirdly shitty game. Two, Matthews and Nylander. Yeah, they did. And, they weren't yeah, themselves. But that big line gave you a second option, and it was wonderful. Now, I'm not a smart enough hockey mind to know this, but is it is Marlowe maybe not getting the attention that Kadri and Marner are because he's playing defense for that line? Yes. He might be. Because the, the points look good the points are so end, goofy between Marner, Marner and Kadri, right? It's like 30 points in 10 games between the two of them. Well, they've had a yeah. five-point game each. That, that that's, <laughs> that's that's crazy. that's the story, yeah. right? Whereas Marlo, well, oh well, he's playing great defense. Well, he's supposed to. But yeah, what <laughs> attention do we need to put on Marlo? He's thirty eight and he's a Hall of Famer and he's going to play well. Like I don't think he needs more media attention. Who cares? If well, I think it's is it part of the story that they are getting this because of him, mm-hmm. part of because of his play? And I agree with that. I think he. I think they are. I think everything for the psyche of Leafs fans, or at least myself, like needs to be. Marner is constantly getting better, and Matthews is constantly getting better. And I, I almost look at it. Sometimes I look at Marlowe like he's not even there. That's like good. It, yeah. Why, and he's why that would good. you want to notice this guy who's so good at no, his job? Not notice him like as a part of this team, because like I just want the long term health of this team to be good, because I'm still just so worried that I'm I'll wake up from this dream. 
you know what I mean? I'm so I'm so hurt, Jesse. I'm just so hurt, and I feel like what the I, what we're watching is a dream. It's not even real. And but when I wake up, I want Marner to be a better player and Matthews to be a better player and Nylander. I don't. Yeah. So it, you, it's not fair to Marlowe, who's been everything that's been asked of him. Yeah. But, or in Hainsey, too. So I, I just don't think you should be concerned about him because he's 38 and he's not going to be here in two years. He might not even be here like a year and a half from now, depending on how his body feels. Mm. So it's like focus on those young guys. Focus on Marner, who's going to be here for the long term. Yeah, I think I think Marlowe's had a great few games like while Kadri and Marner have been putting up points. But like being like aggressive, like on the four check, like, like uh, he's been playing like Hyman and Brown recently, and he threw a hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a good one. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Good. The nice guy behind hit. me went, Marlo! <laughs> <laughs> I love League fans, man. <laughs> details, the, man, the, the details. The dumbest thing. The dumbest thing. Like that empty net goal, the Komarov bank pass them out. Smart! Smart! <laughs> <laughs> so smart. So smart. Like the goal's not even in yet. Yeah. Well, it, it just makes me wonder, um, you know, First off, you can't split that lineup. They're red hot. But even when they're not red hot anymore, because they, you know, lines eventually come back down to earth. Mm -hmm. Even I I still think when they're not red hot, they're going to be way above average. And I think that's a line that you go, okay, you got your, you got your line one and your line two set. Now the issue is going to be line three. Bozak's got 28 points in 50 something games. Uh, JVR played 10 minutes last night. Really? Yeah. So the number. Yeah. So I looked into that. Oh, wow. I looked into that Played a little bit. Played three shifts, this I think, in the third period. I, I looked into that a little bit this morning. So Babcock has been fiddling with the lines in the third period a lot lately because the Leafs have had the lead. And it's been it's usually been something like I think he fiddled with Bozak with Kapanen and Komarov. Because mm-hmm. I guess he trusts Bozak I saw that, a yeah. more. But uh That was a defensive zone face off start was too, one? wasn't oh, it? Brown I think so. Brown, Bozak, and Komarov as well. He doesn't trust JVR defensively. You know why? He shouldn't. JVR shocking. So I I looked into it. Um, not just the time on ice, because time on ice, I think is, I think shifts are a better indication of how a coach feels about a player, because time on ice. I mean, there's a wide variety of factors. You might play a shitload of ice time because you got hemmed in your own zone like four or five times and mm-hmm. you spent an extra 15, 20 seconds out there that shift. Or you played a, a ton of shorthanded. Yeah, or, it, yeah, Hainsey plays 100 minutes because we took a billion penalties. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, and then, well, Hainsey's another interesting factor because he might play fewer shifts. But they're longer. No, 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 sorry, we were going to the same place. Yeah, sorry, yeah, same my thing. Bad. Yeah, we're great. I realized halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, JVR on the Toronto Maple Leafs, ranks 19th in shifts per game interesting now two of the guys ahead of them are justin hall and martin marinson who are defensemen and they they don't really count small sample size yeah Yeah, so that doesn't count so take those two out he's 17th on a team that ices 18 skaters (laughs) a night wow now maybe one of those guys is borgman take him out because he's in the minors right now so you're still at 16th i'm trying to think of anyone maybe he better not be getting more than levo I'm leaving him in because that's that. That is a what's what's the word I'm looking for? It, not chastising. JVR, the word's gone. I lost it. It's a, anyway. JVR is not playing a lot. It's a good thing though, because the team should get used to playing without him. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it also, makes me feel like it'll be easier to replace him because mm-hmm. everyone keeps looking at the goals and the good things he does. I feel like this team will still score power play goals without him. They do. Yeah, <laughs> they do. They do, but he's in on it. A okay, lot. fair. But here, this my my issue with that is okay. So you've got now now you can run you can run three lines in a defensive situation when you got the lead in the third period, right? It makes sense that an offensive specialist, which let's let's be honest, that's what JVR is. He's an yeah. offensive and, weapon, and that's he's just Babcock using him to his strengths. Bingo! Why put him in a position that he can't succeed? Remember when he was on the first line? Went great. Didn't had a lot of goals allowed a lot of goals. So that's the thing. My my thing with people is like, they're like, well, they can't, they focus on his goals when they say, can the Leafs replace JVR? My thing is, can they replace his differential? Right. And that's going to be the more important thing. Anybody. Right. And, and so I think that they can, so you might get a guy who scores 15 goals, but he might allow 15 to 20 less. 
on I, on while he's on the ice. What I said in uh, at the end of my LFR today is Josh Levo better spend the entire freaking summer just tipping in pucks. Yeah. You yeah. know that whole Phil Kessel thing? Oh, I might have skated 10 times all summer. That better not be you, Josh. No, you better he... be on the ice and have a buddy, have a have a younger cousin, have somebody firing pucks at you every single day, dawn till dusk, and you pr- practice tipping them in. That's your job, man. Can you play 10 to 12 minutes a night and just tip in pucks and be a big jerk in front of the net? I think it's he a can. very specific role. He actually has a great shot, easy. too. Sorry? He has a great shot, too. He certainly does. Oh, my God. He's got a great shot. Now, I mean, I don't know when the last time he used it was. So, it's it's to me, it's interesting that when people say, and I, 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 I there are some respected people who have written great articles on why the Leafs, you know, might want to consider re-signing him. I am in the camp that you don't. Wow. Okay. But so. he's great while you have him. It's JVR, just too much money for a guy you can only play for 10 minutes in a game like last night. JVR is getting 20.6 shifts a game, which is 19th. That's crazy. And the only Leafs behind him are Callie Rosen, who I forgot was a Leaf, Eric Fair, Kasperi Kapanen is a bit surprising, Dominic Moore, Nikita Soshnikov, Josh Levo, Freddie Gauthier, Matt Martin. Hmm. Like, this guy's getting, like, fourth-liner shifts. Is it possible? For you to sort that by the entire NHL, I'd like to know what are the players around him who get good similar question. shifts. Uh, good question. Sure, and I'll I'll sort it by forwards. Yes. Sure. Yeah, I can. I can do that while you guys stall. So, yeah, my <laughs> resigning JVR. Yeah, I think I think as we talked about last episode, I really feel like this is a rent your own player situation. You need a JVR. You do. But you don't need him in every situation. And I think if you're going to spend $6 million on somebody, that's got to be a guy you can use in any situation. Patrick Marlowe, with the exception of the penalty kill, plays in any situation. He makes five point whatever, and he's got 19 goals, which isn't that far behind what James Van Riemsdyk has. And I'm using Patrick Marlowe as an example because he's up around what JVR is supposed to be making. Six to seven million. Patrick Marlowe's five something. So to me, it's okay. This is great for this season. You keep him for this season. You need that key goal in the playoffs on a power play or whatever. But let's not get over in over our heads here and re-sign a guy, unless the term's great, that may or may not help. My favorite part about that is the reallocation of the money. Yes. You take the $6 million you don't pay JVR, you replace him with somebody who's already on the lineup like Levo, and you take that $6 million and you give it to Matthews and Marner and Nylander. So I'm really glad you asked me uh, to look this up. So... JVR's uh, 20.6 shifts a game. There are one, two, three, four, five players in the NHL getting 20.6 shifts a game. Forward, sorry. Uh, so they, the exact same as him. The exact same. They are uh, Brendan Gallagher, James Van Riems, like obviously, Patrick Laine. Uh, wait, did I screw this up? Brendan Gallagher, James Van Riems, like Patrick Laine, David Perron, and Josh Bailey. And those are, I'll take any and all of them on my team. Uh, Gallagher's got 20 goals. line has got 25 goals. Perron has 51 points. Bailey has 61 points. So, theory. Let me throw this out there. Well, actually, no. One more thing before my theory. Uh, so, out of all those players, JVR is playing by far the fewest minutes. Uh, JVR is, remember, these are all 20.6 shifts a game. JVR is at 14.34, Gallagher is at 15.36, Line is at 16.46, mm-hmm. Perron is at 17.40, and Josh Bailey is at 18.01 per so game. So Josh Bailey's just staying out there? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he's their second. I guess. He's, oh, that's insane. He's playing three and a half minutes more per game than JVR. Exact but, same amount of shifts. Yeah, but remember, wow. too, remember too, the Islanders are not as deep as the Leafs. And mm. they have to run those lines out there, especially at the end of games if they're trying to come back. Mm. It's so an I, interesting I, look at coaching styles, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I just don't think that they can run. I think that your the frequency and length of Leaf shifts is going to be skewed because they can run four That's lines. Or how about this? So, and this might explain it somewhat. So he's an offensive player who they put in offensive situations. Uh, his shifts might be short because they score in the power play. And once you score, the power play's over. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, the Leafs have been leading a lot this season. Ooh, I wonder if I could look up uh, time, like the amount of time a team has spent with the lead this I season. I will. Look I would do it now. Yeah, yeah okay. I fine. would do it now. <laughs> Sorry, I think we're getting a, like a deeper. That's project. a little too meta. Uh, make <laughs> a video it? on that. 
But but maybe take this clip and start a video on that. Thanks, Dad. There no, you go. That's actually a great idea. Right? So then you can get a really full picture, and you can bring out your whiteboard. We missed the whiteboard. Where's the whiteboard been? Uh, Why don't you just, like, produce me at my house? I would love to help. You know where the whiteboard is? Currently soaking in a bunch of water. Ah! <laughs> Steve's yeah. had a bad morning. Yeah, that's it's been gonna, a bad uh, week. That's gonna say it wasn't that bad of a morning. I had a nice, nice phone call, and then after the phone call, I discovered the basement was leaking. So that's, that's uh, like bad, bad. Oh but, yeah. Like, sorry, I thought we talked about this on the podcast. It was no, no, it was, no, just it was us as in the car before the podcast. Yeah. No, um, it's um, so when we moved into this house about four years ago. We had a nice bottle of wine on the kitchen counter from the previous owners, and they're like, we hope, uh, you know, this house treats you as well as it treated us, and, you know, had a lot of memories in this house. Uh, the basement might have a little leak, and this and that and that. And I go, I go what, 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 what? Can you back up? Uh, the basement might have a leak sounds an awful lot like the basement has a leak. And so it leaks sometimes, and we got to put the dehumidifier on. No, no, no. This is Noah's Ark. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. Put towels I, down, and it's in the blue room. We had that at my house growing up, and we had to go in, and you have to sometimes you have to patch. Sometimes it's drainage. Sometimes For us, it turned out to be drainage. It was just like, you know, it, it didn't drain. Water didn't drain out of the house properly anymore, and that happens over time. The grounds change or whatever. So you're going to have a fun time figuring that out. Yeah, I think um, it's a crack in the foundation. Pretty stoked. Uh, pretty stoked. Can we share uh, the foundation with our neighbors? So we're probably going to have to talk to them. That's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. Be great. Um, Luckily, where the leak is coming in from, if we do have to knock out the wall, is not the wall that you see in the videos. Right. So even if there's no wall behind the camera, <laughs> ah, you won't know. So I'll just, I don't know. If you I look, don't know. I'm just trying to talk myself into this not being that bad. If you want to, it may not be. It may not be. If you want to look up something fun to distract yourself from this, Steve, look up the hashtag so snow must go tweets. This is from Islanders fans who have started a campaign to get rid of Garth Snow. Snow going is uh, what caused the leak in the that, first place. Oh, you mean Garth. Garth. You see? Because... Um, in response to a I'm, successful I'm a GoFundMe to put up billboards calling for Snow's firing near Barclay Center, Islanders forward Anders Lee had an interesting reaction. He basically said, hey, he brought us all in here because he's been the GM there forever. You know, and, and I guess there was going to be a donation to his charity. And he said, we can't, I can't accept that donation. You know, he stood up for Garth on Twitter today, which, you know, I, I appreciate Islander fans are upset for two reasons. First off, it's the Jonathan Tavares thing that's been hanging over them like a cloud. Number two, they they played pretty well most of the season, and now they're falling out of it. And now it's like, okay, you if you have one of those things, if Tavares might go, but you're making the playoffs, this doesn't happen. If Tavares is locked up to a long-term deal, but you're not making the playoffs, this doesn't happen. But those two things together, and they, I think there's one playoff win in the last 12 years. Like series win. Yeah. Um, that, that will... Put some heat on your general manager. My question is, with Garth Snow there, and with some pretty good prospects, and things looking a little bit up, yeah, yeah, are they overreacting? I understand the frustration, but I, I honestly believe, and as much as we joke, Jonathan Tavares is not leaving. That no, never happened. I don't think so. Well, and what I would ask Islanders fans is, do you think losing Garth Snow would make it more or less likely that Tavares is going to leave? Hmm. Because he probably likes Garth Snow. Or, like, not just he likes Garth Snow. How much do you want to sign long-term with a team that just fired their GM? You know, it's generally speaking, it's not a good indicator of where things are going when Mm -hmm. a GM When a coach gets fired, ah, you might bounce back next week. You know, it's happened. Hi, Penguins fans. But uh, GM, no. It's odds are things are going very, very bad. And you're going to want to leave. But uh, to Islanders fans, I would say, I'm just looking at the team. Calvin DeHaan on IR. We've seen how much losing one defenseman can hurt a team. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to bet this is a big part of uh, their woes. I'm just looking. Johnny Boychuk's played only 37 games this season. And it doesn't look like he's been awesome. Uh, they also don't have Travis Hamannick anymore. Don't have Travis Hamannick anymore. But they anymore. do have a, a potential lottery pick. I Yep, yeah, that's true. I uh, doubt Thomas Grice is going to play like this forever. I wonder, like, couldn't couldn't you look at everything that's gone right for your team? The Everly trade worked. Huge, huge yeah. worked. Think about how Ed, think about how you'd feel now if you didn't have Everly, exactly. right? The, that trade worked. Uh, Barzal was a hit, or 
Someone was tripping me about how I pronounce it. Barzal? Bar- Barzal? I don't know. I don't know. Barzal Matt. was always, yeah. Matt B. <laughs> so, anyway. Dolazal. Dolazal. <laughs> oh, I was, okay. Yeah, there you it. go. I get it. There you go. I was like, why are you bringing him up? Because I went to school I mean, with the guy who had that I would, name. I anyway. Would, <laughs> I'd be a little concerned about Josh Bailey and John DeFerris being up this year, which they both are. Are you saying that the Islanders are pretending to be something they're not? No, <laughs> it wasn't that. Deep. I thought it was. I thought it was veiled and no. very inside. No, the name sounded similar. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> Every single... everything's. Uh, Sorry, go. How? Oh, what was the word here? A lot has gone right for the Islanders. Uh huh. Yeah. In a season where a lot of things have also gone pretty wrong. I look at the Islanders' fortunes this season. And think you could go right back into not just being a playoff team next year, but a contender. You bring Tavares back. Barzell's a year better. Eberle's a year more in the system. You're a little healthier. Maybe you make one addition on the back end. Maybe you make a swap in net. You're well, fine. Look what we saw. And I'm not. Hosan comp- graduates. Yeah. And yeah. Beauvillier full time. Well, on. think about <sighs> this too. You know, you've got two first round picks. So if you miss the playoffs and Calgary misses the playoffs, you got two shots at Rasmus Dolan. <gasps> and even if you don't, look at I didn't even think of that. Look at the chance that if you've got look at what um Edmonton did the year they draft I believe they drafted Yakupov and Clefbaum in the same draft. No. I believe oh, it was I think it was first yeah. and 18th or something like that. That's crazy. When you think about what Two first round picks, whether or not you're in, you know, and, and they, I, they drafted again. They drafted Clefbaum at 18th. So that's a playoff team's first round pick. I don't know if that was the same year. Anyways. Uh, but they did. They had a first overall pick and they drafted Clefbaum with the second first overall wow. pick. I do know that. So think, wow. I want you to think about. So how it worked was in 2011, first overall, Edmonton drafted Ryan Nugent uh, Hopkins. And then it was. And 19th overall, they drafted Oscar that's a good first round that's pretty so think about that right that's pretty good and you look at the new jersey devils i think the new jersey devils are a real story and i actually think i would throw the toronto maple leafs in this category too even outside of austin matthews if toronto ends up with patrick line or pierre marc dubois in that draft pierre luke pierre luke dubois excuse me not are they as good no but they're on their way. But they're on their way. They're probably closer to what we thought that w- they would be. Look at what New Jersey is. Yeah. They have turned that team around in no in no time. In no time. With a bunch of merry men. Yeah. And it's funny because people are like, oh, they're slipping and they might not make the playoffs. Three wins in their last 10, whatever it is. Um, you know. The fact that they're even in the conversation. They're, the similarities between them and the Leafs is crazy. Because oh, yeah. Remember how much of a disappointment it was going to be if they missed the playoffs last year? But let's let's say the Devils do miss the playoffs. Look where you are compared to where you were. You a couple points out of the playoffs. You would have taken that at the beginning of the season. Yeah, big time. But it's it's hard just looking at where they were. I'm looking at uh, Garcino's trade record from like 2016 on, and it's been pretty good. All right, go through them. Like it's the. Carter Verhage for Christos Guslevskis trade. That <laughs> and that was a Leaf prospect, Carter Verhage. Yeah. The yeah, former. Uh, they, they got him in the Grabner trade where they got everybody. Yes. Yeah. That was uh, 2015 September. And then um, they got Shane Prince in a seventh for a third. And then they did the expansion draft trade, which isn't the greatest. They traded away a first and a second in 2019. But then they get it back. They get a first in 2018 a second in 2018, a conditional second in 2019 for Hamannick, and then the Eberly ryan Strom trade. Yeah, I would say the one criticism I would have is you got a lot for Hamannick. The only problem is none of it helped you now, hmm. right? So they, they didn't replace him there. Um, but this draft is really interesting because you could continue to prepare for the future, or you can trade off one of those picks and... You could trade a first rounder at the draft and instantly get better if you wanted to, and you'll still have another first. Here's the the oh, pick I would trade would be next year. If Calgary misses the playoffs this year, the yeah. Islanders get Calgary's second round pick next year. That's a pick you can just as trade. well? Yeah, it's as well. It's the um it's a conditional pick in the Hamnick trade. It's conditional second. It's either gonna be next year's second or 2020, 2020 second. 
So if they miss this they're year, still getting they the get first, it. though. They and still then the they first. still get the first and the first for both years. Or no, the second from this year and then the first from this year. So they get three picks. Jesus. Yeah. So you got picks to the trade away. Got picks to trade. Here's here's another one. Who will be the first team in NHL history to win more than one lottery in the same season? Imagine if oh, you will. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Imagine if you will. The Islanders miss the playoffs. The Flames miss the playoffs. Boom, boom. They hit with both picks. Can you freaking imagine? Like first and third. Second first, and third. Second and third. Any combination of the top three. Like, look what Brian Burke had to go through to draft the Sedins together. Uh, yep. And, and the, that was second, third. And that that could be the Islanders this year. So I, if I'm an Islanders fan, as much as I maybe am tired of Garth Snow, and I get it. Listen, I, I get it. We're Toronto fans. Time. We get it. Mm. He's been there a long time. You just get sick of somebody eventually. Yeah. yeah. If Garth Snow makes a couple shrewd moves, these don't have to be bangers. They don't have to be ones that you stole a trade. They just have to be good moves. You're laughing. And it, what they really suck. need. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's the same sometimes thing. Sometimes it is that simple. It's Your goalie Winnipeg. sucked. It's Winnipeg. Last year, their goalie sucks. Their goalies are good this year. Winnipeg is a great young team last year. They are still a great young team, but they've got great goaltending, and now they're good. And I'm and, sure they and improved. And up for... this year, so like yeah. you can reset in September. Yo, that's a freaking... I mean, the, you get that Halak contract off your books? 4.5, yeah. That's great. That's really great. I mean, you basically just give all that money to John. Is Marc-Andre Fleury up? No. Mm. No, See if I'm quite. Okay, so that's the thing. If, if he was up this year, I'd be throwing every dollar at him. One guy I, I maybe look at, and this is going to sound crazy, okay. but if you want league average goaltending, which is all the Leafs wanted when they got Freddie Anderson, they ended up getting much better than that, but league, league average goaltending is great. That's such a good contract, by the way. Five million bucks. <sighs> yeah. League average goaltending. Roberto Luongo. It's something to consider, or even... Bring him home. Or Bring even, him home. Even James Reimer. Even James Reimer. Luongo ending his career in Long Island would be really funny. Wouldn't it be great? <laughs> right? Yeah, that'd be pretty good. I'm trying to think of other teams who have like a surplus. Or maybe, ooh. Ugh. I wonder if the Leafs could somehow weasel one of those delicious picks out of the Islanders for like Sparks or Pickard. The firsts? No, probably no, not the no, first, no. but they got <clears throat> maybe the sliding second. Um, but I, why would you do that? You got a you got a position of strength. That's what the Leafs like. Yeah, they'll right. let them sit until they'll pass their expiry I'm date. Getting excited until they request they will, a trade. They, yeah, they will Josh Levo those those two. <laughs> like they will. It's That's what you do. They've Build awarded, the depth. They've awarded some like interesting contracts to like avoid situations like that. Like Nikita Zaitsev, they had that clause where he needs to be called up by a certain date. So mm-hmm. they got Sashnikov. What I you said Zaitsev, but oh my bad, Sa- Sasha Yeah, one of the one of the Nikitas. <laughs> so they they call him up. All right, fine, everyone's happy. Levo, no certainty. Oh, okay, well, we'll extend you. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Garrett Sparks, oh, I'm one of the best goalies in the AHL uh, this year. Well, next year you're on a one way deal. You know, so they, they've they've kept a lot of the fringe guys happy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there, there I am making it about the Leafs again. For the I don't Islanders, think the Islanders are far. Three UFA goalies that are coming up. Jonathan Bernier, Antti Ranta, and Carter Hutton. There's three options. Ooh, Carter Hutton sets off alarm bells. I Antti cause... Ranta would, and you could get him at a cheap price because of how bad Arizona yeah. is. But that's not Antti Ranta's fault. Mm-hmm. Arizona sucks. Also, period. They're just bad. I think they're conscious of what the fans think, and I don't think fans will be like, Hallelujah! We got anti Ranta. <laughs> I'd give him another shot. Seems to like the New York area. Carter oh, Hutton yeah. has been, yeah. Carter Hutton has been so stupid good. That strikes me as a contract where you're buying high. Okay, Florida Never... wants to apparently cut money. You flip that sliding second of Calgary maybe to Florida because mm-hmm. if they want to, if they if they're looking at trading Luongo, how valuable is Luongo now? You're not. I don't think they should even pay that much. Because okay. Lu- that Luongo contract is a... It's a doozy. It's a weird situation where, like, like, it's still going and going and going. Like, you're doing them a favor. I'm looking at his... Roberto Luongo is signed through 2022. <laughs> that is insane. His current age is 38 years young. You know how we talk about how long <laughs> the Lundquist deal is? That's longer. 
isn't it? Or it's at least the same amount no, of time. It's longer. His and first he's older. game was in 1999. With the Islanders. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but look at this. Okay. Have a look at this. Look at the Leafs roster from 99. <laughs> so, Roberto Luongo, <laughs> last year on the bad Florida team, on the bad Florida team, had a 268 goals against average and a 915 save. He's played 15 games this year. He's 6-6. Six and six. 928 save percentage, 261 goals against. But when he comes back, I mean, it's the thing with injuries, right? You look at his numbers before the injury and you go, oh, he'll be right back. You never so, know. So if you sign Antti Ranta and you get Roberto Luongo and Roberto Luongo can start you 40 games and Antti Ranta can do 44. Mm-hmm. What about, and here's what I'm like, just up. all you need is stability on the Islanders and you're fine. What the hell happened? And maybe Islanders fans can answer us to uh, Thomas Grice. He, I think he got hot and then just got not hot. Well, okay. So here's his career. We'll do his post-lockout career, okay? Because uh-huh. he was with the Sharks. We'll look at all his time away from the Sharks. 25 games with Phoenix back when it was Phoenix. A 920 goalie. 20 games with Pittsburgh. A 908. 41 games with the Islanders. 925. 51 games with the Islanders. 913. This season, 23 games. 885. There, he's that's yeah. not gonna happen again. No, it won't. It it's won't. not. Halak might. Yeah, but I mean that's that's the point, right? Uh, it, it if you really wanted to do an overhaul on your goaltending, it's not gonna be that hard to do. Are you gonna get a superstar goaltender? Probably not. Unless Carey Price is made available. <laughs> but, Maybe some goalie performs amazingly at the Olympics and you sign them. See? See? The there's just chances. Um, hey, qu- um, anyway, Islanders fans, don't fret. I know it's a tough time, but don't fret. Um, quick question about De- the Dion Phaneuf trade. Yes. And well, I guess we can really get into this, but. Yeah, because we didn't. That happened after yeah, our right show, after. right? We never talked. That. It feels like we talked about it, but, but we, we didn't. never did. The hockey yeah. news cycle is insane. <laughs> it's too quick. Dion Phaneuf to Los Angeles for Marion Gabrick, essentially. And there was a couple, Nate Thompson and uh, what was the other guy? Uh, Nick Shore. Uh, Nick Shore. Nick Shore is an RFA this year, which saves them some money. Nick, and Nate Thompson, who's making too much money. And we knew Nate yeah. Thompson was making too much it's money, a money when he deal. signed. It's a money deal. It's, it saves Ottawa basically about $5 million. Over the course of this, of this, like three twenty five a year. So it's not much. Why? Why does this deal make sense for Ottawa? And specifically, and I think this is more important, the LA Kings, who are now in a playoff, uh, who are now on the outside, in the uh, sorry, outside looking in on the playoffs for the second straight year. Like the Kings, the Kings need to make the playoffs. Well, the Kings, the Kings are one of those teams, like the Leafs, that have discovered that uh, contracts don't matter. (laughs) <laughs> whatever side of the paper doesn't matter enough makes them better you know everyone talks about him like he's a plug like he's just he's not he's just not a seven million dollar player he's fine and if you play him in a role he can succeed and he'll be fine and are they getting him at five seven five or something because they how, like what, i don't know what auto would retain five two five it's pretty good that's you know enough is worth five two five I'd say, I'd so. say a lot of people would disagree, but like uh, he puts up points. So if if, he he really not, this year. if he's not worth five two five, he might be worth four and a half. And we're talking about a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar difference, he's and not, that's not a huge he's thing. He's instantly less overpaid. Um, he's a little bit older, but he's not ancient. No, nope. thirty two. No. By the end of his deal, yeah, maybe. And maybe, maybe you can work. Now he was getting crushed with Cody Cece, mm-hmm. absolutely crushed in the Who's course. Who's not of the a good player. <laughs> okay, I, I refuse to believe that. The stats indicate he is a uh, bad he was he was almost NHL traded. Player. He was almost traded for Taylor Hall, sir. So you oh shut your God. mouth. Uh, Cody Cece is decent. <laughs> I wonder where that would rank in the worst trades in NHL history. Which, by the way, given what we know, Ras for Raycroft has to be has to be up there. Okay, let's not get into that. <laughs> Why are we bringing that? Up? How did you get there? Your right side. Leaves. It is all about the. Le- Phaneuf yeah. is a right-handed shot. If I'm not no, mistaken, left. he's a left-handed shot. But plays the right. Okay, but plays the right. So if, if he's playing the right, your right defensive pairing for LA is Drew Doughty, Alec Martinez, and Christian Fullen. So now you've got Drew Doughty, Alec Martinez, and Dion Phaneuf. Now, if you want to play on the left side, Muzzin, uh, Gravel, and Forbert. And Gravel's made up. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is that if, if Dion Phaneuf is what they say <laughs> he is, which is a, a pretty good 5-6 option, and yes, overpaid at that, fine. That helps L.A. What I don't understand is the Ottawa side of this, which saves them a few million dollars and gets Nate, Con- Nate Thompson's contract off the books a year early. Fine. And uh, was Stolt? 
Stolt? Stolt? Sure. Sure. Why do I keep saying that name? Because you sure. probably just looked at Stoll or something. Yeah. I don't know. Sure, you can resign. He's an RFA. He's a young guy. If you want. If you want him. If you don't, that's fine too. What does acquiring Marion Gabrick do? And I'm not talking about on the player side of things because we know Marion Gabrick is close to retirement. So if he retires, do they not? They don't have that contract becomes off the no, books. No, but right? he wouldn't. He wouldn't retire My for that thing, reason. When I saw that, I was like, Marion Gabrick not playing for them. He's going on LTIR or something next year. Oh, they could, they're, they, they're gonna lose. They could lose dog this. Yeah, because well, it doesn't make sense, like Adam's saying, to have him there through 2021. He, he's too old. He's he signed almost him. as long as Roberto Luongo. Yeah. <laughs> That's you, how we should base contracts. Are they signed <laughs> as long? Or Dustin Brown? Are they signed as long as Brent, Dustin Brown? Brent and Brent Seabrook. Oh yeah. yeah. Holy buddy. moly. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Tyler. Well, okay. What one one thing? Um, be interesting to see if they lose it because yeah, that was. My first thing was, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Ottawa's in a different position they because they have to pay Gabrick. Or I don't know if <sighs> – Tyler Dello did a good job of breaking down a couple things. Uh, one was he went, hey, Blackhawks fans, exactly how much better is Brent Seabrook than Dion Phaneuf <laughs> hmm. in terms of their contracts? And I was like, what? Ooh. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Uh, the other thing he brought up was, is Gabrick insured? And I remember that was an that was an aspect of the Clarkson for Horton deal that I didn't quite the understand. Hort- so basically, Clarkson's contract is insured. If he can't play, the insurance company picks up his salary. Yeah. If he can't, the Blue Jackets. not the Blue Jackets. Whereas Horton's was not for some reason. They didn't have insurance on him. So the Leafs, <laughs> the Leafs physically have to pay Horton, which they can easily which do. Which is <laughs> whereas whereas Columbus now Vegas doesn't have to pay Clarkson's salary. So what? So might this be the deal with Gabrick? That might be the deal. Um, maybe maybe Gabrick's deal's insured. Because if it's not, then you got to pay him the actual dollars, and you got to pay someone else to play in the lineup. But didn't Gabrick just come back, or is he currently injured? I don't remember. Uh, no, I think he's good enough to play. And he's pl- he's, he's put play, up 14 but... points in 30 games. That's not no, bad for a guy. He's not a terrible player, but our, but I guess the suggestion is at some point he'll go on LTIR. Okay. Or just retire. Well, if he retires, then he doesn't get the money, right? No, they, so, yeah. exactly. Just yeah. sit out. So he's, yeah, if he's going to get, well, he's not going to retire. <laughs> well, though. Um, yeah, Gabrick played in the Kings' last game on on the uh, 13th versus Carolina. Here, let me look something up, though, because, I mean, there was, the host of thing was very complicated and blah, blah, blah. His condition is actually real. But the reality is also that he was making like a million bucks and that wasn't enough for him to keep playing. Gabrick. He's making five million and seventy-five thousand dollars this year, followed by four five seven five, followed by three one seven five, and then three oh seven five. Yeah, so maybe... that's still six million dollars. I'm playing. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. is still a lot. But like, where? I don't know. Well, you're, you're not to playing. Say... You're just not retiring. Yeah. You're gonna mm. sit on a couch. Yeah, I'll think. I'll I'll, uh, I'll buy a cottage on Lake Eugene. <laughs> uh... <laughs> well, that was the thing with like Mark Savard, for example. Like it was. Everyone knew he was never going to play again, but he didn't officially retire until like what a month ago. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> yeah, I love that press contract. release that came out and was like, "Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that anyone asked." Has but Chris Pro- Chris Pronger is YouTube working channel. for the NHL and still not a retired player? Yeah, I was, I was <laughs> like, the NHL is in on this. <laughs> yeah, they know what's up. Because <laughs> isn't, isn't Chris Pronger a fee- uh, an Arizona Coyote or something or something? I think he or maybe a Devil. He might be a devil. Mark I don't Savard even... uh, retired a devil, didn't he? I don't remember. His, his Question for you, Chris, this is Chris Pronger's last year. <laughs> At the end of this season. No, we're in 2018. No, last year was his last oh, year. Oh, it was. Okay. There you go. So now he's Who did done. he retire as? What what team? Whose property? Oh, God. Does it say? No. I think it was Arizona. The signing team is Because I think they got Datsuk and Pronger. Their deals last year. I'm not sure. Yeah, anyway, funny. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to figure out Ottawa's perspective on this. Okay, so why did... Because Pierre Dorian looked pretty happy yesterday during yes. his press conference. I mean, he did just come back from Barbados, which I highly suggest if you can afford it, go. It's amazing. I've only um, heard good things. He did come back with a three-year extension, which I always recommend three-year extensions too. Those are great. If you can get one of those at your job, you're laughing. Number And then the last thing is he, he did get out from under a Dion Phaneuf contract that... Admittedly, Ottawa should have never traded for in the first place. Yeah, sorry. That was the other good Dello thing is he's like, you know what? It's harder. 
it's hard to be like, we need to get out from under the steel. And the Sens did it. Right? So, but no, they they're, got they're under not the a better team, deal. but I think it'll be easier to get out of the Gabrick deal than the Phaneuf deal. And it and maybe the Gabrick deal wrong. just pays overall in, in actual dollars just less. Mm, just that less. might be true, yeah. Uh, something uh, just occurred to me. Uh, I don't remember why, but uh, Mike, uh, not Mike Brown, Dustin Brown just got, what was it, the one-game suspension? Sure. For what? I think it was a knee. This did, he time? Knee, did he knee? Who need Taylor Hall in the head again? Need Taylor Hall oh, was in the it, head. It wasn't it Alexander Burroughs? Or no? no? Oh, what a psycho! Yeah. Yeah, that was... Wow, I wasn't we not here. talked about that No, I wasn't here. No. So, oh, uh, my God. That was insane. That's crazy. And good on him. Good on Alex Burroughs for not appealing. And good on the Taylor Hall for saying he what he said after the game, too. Uh, I love yeah, quotes. Well, I like what he said after the hit from Gouda. Dustin Brown got one game for the Sergachev, you know. Uh, That's it. Yes, yeah, it was yeah. Sergachev. That was that was that was it. Yeah. Um So George Peros is like the head disciplinarian, right? Mm-hmm. Can we make a rule where, you know, Jesse's just showing us right now, it is really gross. Here comes Sergachev and neat. Oh. It was gross. Now, here's the thing. Uh yeah, I think he only gets the one game because isn't Mike Brown uh Dustin Brown not a repeat offender. Yes, he has gotten. Technically, he, he's, I think he's only had one suspension, and it happened what 2011 or 2012. Too long ago. We're, Crazy. I think maybe they should do away with removing things from the record. First of all, yeah, I think so too. But also, if you're gonna have a former player uh, on your staff making these decisions, I think there should be a rule where if the person you are reviewing is a former teammate, you are removed. From the decision-making process. I like that. George Peros played on the Manchester Monarchs in the American Hockey League with Dustin Brown. He played on the LA Kings with Dustin Brown. They were young guys on that team together. Uh, Brown is 33. How old is George Peros right now? Trying to find out. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how old George Peros is. They started their pro careers (laughs) together pretty much. Is he? Yeah. That's it, eh? Oh, I guess they didn't start at the same time. But anyway... um, They played together, and I'm not suggesting shenanigans, but I think it would be wise to prevent future shenanigans by uh, barring former teammates from being able to decide what happens to their former teammates. And I have to say, it's too bad this happened because Dustin Brown has had a complete revival since John Stevens took over, and it's it's amazing. I'm looking at his points right now. This is the most he has scored since the lockout year, since before the lockout year, that is. Wow. So 2011, 2012, he had 54 points. He has 50, 55 games played this year, 38 points. All of last year, he had 36. What an absolute disaster of a contract that looked like. Yeah. And, well, and, and they right back on track. Turned it into something. And so it's That's too, always the best case scenario, right? It's not the, trading it. Yeah, Clarkson, Horton situation. It's imagine Clarkson comes back and is great. Hmm. Yeah. That would have been pretty good. Clarkson comes back and he's a net front presence scoring 30 goals a year. And he's perfectly healthy and everything's fine. Everyone's happy. And he's playing in Edmonton where he should have signed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For at a discount at because a dis- he signed yeah. for less. Yeah. So he, um, he was signed for more. He would have been their original Lucic contract. Ooh, yeah. And Lucic has been okay. He's for been better. now. He's got a lot of time to get bad. That's the, that I think has been the problem. <laughs> does the does Gabrick make them any better though? Losing. I don't think they want to. Yeah. I don't think they want to get better. I think they're going to get worse before they get better. Up front. Okay. Yeah. Well, He's also, he is a weapon. He might get a lot of ice time after they trade everyone else. Well, and the thing is, too, the next guy for me, for the Sens, Bobby Ryan. Oh, Bobby who Ryan. Who the hell's taking that? Like, you, you got to you gotta figure that's their next guy. Who's taking that, though? No one's taking that, man. Come on. Bobby Ryan has seven goals this year in 39 games. So he's been injured. He had 13 last year, 22 the year before. He has not scored over 30 goals since before the lockout. Jesus. And that's that's the problem here is that he was signed. He was signed like at, he was signed right after that to this big massive contract. And and it, I think it goes what three or four more years. I think the Bobby Ryan deal. Yeah, 2022. <sighs> yeah. Jesus. That is not good. Well, Adam looked like you took that personally. Oh, that's tough, man. That yeah, is a, a tough long one. Time. You're retaining on that if you're trading it. You're retaining on that. 
Oh my god. It, like and half. He, but like the Sens can't afford to do that. Now the Sens don't have a first round pick next year because it looks like this year's pick is going to be in the top 10, which means they retain it. Mm -hmm. So if you're a Sens, are you okay with selling off everything and knowing that even if you're rebuilding next year and you're terrible, you don't even get your own pick? I don't think what I don't think you have a choice. And here's here's where you get your your pick back, a pick back, Eric Carlson. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Eric Carlson stays in Ottawa. That's one move I think. I think there's a couple moves there. I think Tavares stays in 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 the island. But they still suck I don't. I don't. Him. Yeah. I, and I'm sorry, and then, Coyotes fans. I don't think OEL stays in Ottawa. I think they're going to trade Eric Carlson. You know why? Arizona. <laughs> they're going to trade him to Arizona. <laughs> I think that Eric. No, no, Car no, you said Ottawa. Sorry, Arizona, Ottawa. Yeah, yeah, yeah both yeah. of those guys. I think are going to move. <laughs> I think Dowdy stays in LA. And yeah. I think OEL and Carlson are going to move. And I, I, re I believe that because if you think about it, okay, great. You got Eric Carlson through his prime and you suck. But isn't that more motivation to go for it next year and try and do something with this lineup? But they have so much stripping to do first. But then they're going to go to free agency, spend all this money and make even more mistakes, making them worse down the line. <laughs> it makes but more sense to the me. The Sens are the most fascinating team in the NHL right now because they, they don't play under the same rules that – yeah. A lot of other teams do. That's true. Like their situ their financial situation is not the Leafs' financial situation. No. They're boned on this pick that they may or may not keep, that they should, and blah blah blah. Well, they're gonna lose one or the other. Exactly. This year, their this year. franchise defenseman may or may not go. They might get another franchise defenseman this year somehow. The there's way too much in the air. They might move the freaking team. <laughs> there's so much going on. What are they gonna do? This deadline, what are they going to do with the draft? What are they going to do at free agency? They're, they've they got to be the most fascinating team in the NHL right now, right? Who's more up in the air than them? Anyone? It's them. They're the biggest wild card in the league. Easily. Well, everyone grab your popcorn. So do you, <laughs> do you trade Eric Carlson? Yes. Get your get your assets, man. <sighs> when do you trade him? Next deadline or summer. this summer? He's got a year left on his deal this summer. But you can't suck. You or, can if you're Steve, okay. They do suck, and they're not getting better. But they're not this bad. They're not. That's, all, that's also true. They're not this. Is bad. Anderson going to be? Bad, is Anderson going to return to form next year? Is Bobby? I mean, Bobby Ryan. His numbers suggest that he goes bad, good, bad, good. He's guess which one he's on now. <laughs> so I don't know. That's good news for them. That's another guy I look at moving. Huh. Anderson? What about the Islanders? Oh, baby. Call the New York Islanders. You also need someone to play for you. I hear you, yeah. guys, I hear you guys have a, an extra second uh, first-round pick. What do we need to do get to get Andrew it? Get Andrew Hammond back. What do we need to do to get your, your, your first-round pick this year so we can have two first-rounders this year and none next year? You see what I'm talking about? It's a crazy team. It's a crazy team. Um. Let's uh, let's keep moving here because we are running a little bit uh, slow on time. A couple things that uh, first off, there's an article you should check out at sportsnet.ca on um, uh, on players that should be moved but aren't going to be, and it's from Down Goes Brown, and I really like this one. Uh, Shea Weber for the Montreal Canadiens, he mentions uh, Oliver Ekman Larson from the Coyotes. Totally agree with that one. Brent Seabrook, uh, Mark Stone in the Senators, uh, Claude Giroux in the Flyers, and he says, and this is my favorite, who's the perfect fit? For Claude Giroux. Who? Think about it. Toronto. No. Who, oh, needs, who, needs, who needs a center that speaks French? Oh. Well, interesting. The really? Nordiques. Yeah. The Nordiques. Agreed. The no. Sens. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Could I mean, Claude they have Giroux. failed to really tap into uh, the French market. The Golden market. Knights, too. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Claude Giroux, $8.25 million cap hit. That's for less than John Tavares. Uh, I don't know for how long. But he, the Flyers are considering moving him. There are rumblings. Maybe he doesn't cost you all that much. And he'd be selling because, high, too. Because the Flyers, what they gain, they're a good team. They're a young team. They gain cap space. So you're not flipping. You're not trading Claude Giroux for his trade value. You're, you're trading for the value that he gives you with the money he frees up. You should trade him yesterday. He signed through. Uh, oh, I lost the page. He's signed through 2022. Ah, he's also signed as long as Roberto Luongo. Two seven five, and they're not in a playoff spot. He'd sure look good with Jonathan Drouin, though. 
Don't you think? They could probably get such a haul for that. What could the Habs offer the Flyers other than Jonathan Drouin? Oh, no, no. You're, again, you're not trading Giroux to get big pieces back. You're trading in to get rid Just of that contract. Get on that. If you don't have to retain on... Listen, Claude Giroux is freaking awesome. But so are the Flyers' picks and prospects. Oh, correction. Philly's third in the Metro. They're sitting in they're super good. Oh, they're they sitting are? happy in a playoffs. So yeah, I feel bad. like it changes every yeah. two seconds. This summer, it happened this summer. You think? I think it happened. Drew? I think. Well, there's already rumors of it. Yeah, he's thirty. So he's I not would. getting better. I would. I feel like we say this every summer, but this could be a pretty crazy summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that that I thought was interesting. Look the at Claude the Blackhawks. It takes four games for a team to make a bunch of rash decisions, and we need to completely change everything. Flyers make the playoffs. Who do they play in the first round? Let's say it's Pittsburgh. Get swept. Ah, we need to trade Giroux. Like, who knows? Who knows? Maybe it happens to the Penguins. Malkin? Finally. It's not It's not a deadline deal thing, though. There might be no, another. No, uh, the last, too good right now. No, I yeah. think, yeah, you don't. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you go into the playoffs, Claude that. Giroux. He's got the, the experience. Yeah, too. yeah. Um, but also interesting is that the last guy he mentions is Henrik Lundqvist, a guy, again, a guy that he doesn't expect to move, doesn't expect to even be on the market, but could might help them. Henrik Lundqvist. Islanders. No. I mean, it would never happen. They could be desperate. No, that's, that's a move where the owner steps in and goes, absolutely not. <laughs> would you trade him to the Flyers? No, he's not going no, anywhere. It's too close. He's not. He's, he's not, not going anywhere. Hank's not going anywhere. But interesting thought. This is why I like this. This is fun. It's funny. We think about like how there's no loyalty in sports, but I still remember the uh the when all the Matt Sundin trade rumors were flying around. They go, Oh, did, did you hear the new one? Or no, they the in the scrum they're like, uh, are you uh, are you catching up on your French? And Matt's is like, What? Why? Oh, the new rumor is you're gonna go to Montreal. And he goes into the microphone. He goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> because he would never do it. No, of course not. He would never do it. Uh, Nashville, would never do it. Nashville apparently is all in on Rick Nash, according to Elliot Friedman's 31 Thoughts. Um, the, the problem is other teams are too. And they do have some excellent prospects. Dante Fabro, Eli uh, Tolvanen are two guys that they mention. But. No, they'd be crazy to get rid of Tolvanen. Tolvanen? It's Tolvanen? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, wow. Man, here's my thing. David Poyle's a freaking genius, and he drafts like a maniac. But do the, th- do the, do the, um, do the Preds need him? Well, how often does the big fish land you a win? I don't know. I mean, we don't know much anymore because they don't tend to move. Well, like last year, Shattenkirk was the big fish. Yeah. And second round. I should go back and look at that. The big fish every year. Like Martin Hansel. So hot. Hansel's so hot. Who's the biggest trade deadline acquisition of the last 10 years? Antoine Vermette? <laughs> Maybe. Like, sorry, biggest trade deadline acquisition of a team that won. Did I say that part? Yeah. The last part? Thomas Caberlet? Like In Boston? <laughs> the last team I can really think of. That like really bought hard. And it wasn't, I don't even think it was like a deadline buy. It was like mid season buy. It was the Carolina Hurricanes when they were just like, Mark Recchi, Doug Waits. Yeah. They somehow floated and then acquired half their team and uh, made it all the way to the thing. Um, it would be interesting to see Kyle Turris and Rick Nash hook up regularly. That would be kind of neat. <laughs> be Praising. Kind of- well, you know what I mean. No, I know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, really. A lot and of there people was were also, telling me phrasing last week, so is, I thought I'd fire back. This is my favorite thing. Steve Eisenman told the Tampa Bay Times, uh, we're trying to win. We want to add to our team, not go sideways. That said, if he wanted to, this is according to Elliot, I could see a package of players and prospects and picks that could tempt the rat the Rangers to send both Nash and Ryan McDonough. Oh, frig off. So if, if, For Girardi. <laughs> For Girardi, no. But like think of seventh. Yeah, and now he's gonna be able to do it. Can you imagine? Like it's over. At no, that point. I can't. Nash and McDonough to the Lightning. They can't afford it. Well, I mean, you could probably cap, I'm yeah. sure if you send Kalorn back and like guys that are underperforming their contracts and stuff. Oh my god. Plus, I'd like to see it. It'd be kinda cool. It would be oh sick. Oh my god. It'd be bananas. Like, like his Kalorn's got hockey. that big fat contract that he's only scored ten goals with at again. Least, 
Okay, I hope Lou Lamorello pulls all his Lou strings and gets the Leafs out of the Atlantic then. <laughs> <laughs> because that's bullshit. Yeah, no, crazy. No, then we get to watch the Lightning. Yeah, man, that's pretty cool. Oh, man, beat up on my team? Yeah, that's fun. Oh. Hey, um, <laughs> let's do the press conference. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. <laughs> Yeah, does the music even do that? Um, Mr. Adair, Adair on okay. Reddit wants to know, if Chicago or Edmonton win the draft lottery, do you think the league should change the lottery odds again? What do you change it to? Like, I think it's fine the way it is. It's just Edmonton got really lucky. Mm-hmm. I saw a really interesting, uh, someone sent something to me and I think all of us. I don't know if you guys read it. It was actually, Steve, I think the Oilers are actually very unlucky with the draft lottery. And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. Well, he's oh, like, I saw this too. I didn't see this. I No, hey, if anyone writes us a theory that long, I will read it. I will not call you stupid. However. <sighs> Give me this theory, Stephen. It was basically, well, so they got Taylor Hall, who's a good player, but not really a great first overall pick player. Then the next year they get Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who again is a good player, but and he's not. as we learned on this show, Oscar Clef- Clefbaugh. Yeah, but at first overall, I'm saying. Oh, okay. And then the next year was Yakupov, which like the 2012 draft wasn't very good. It wasn't very full of first overall pick talent. So they mm. actually got very unlucky. You see. Oh, the and- hole in that theory <laughs> is you still got enough to build around. And also, McDavid was the hit of all hits. <laughs> you yeah. hit with that first overall pick. And also, you got a good player in Hall. Nugent Hopkins is a good player. Yakupov, I think, was development. A little bit. At least a little bit. Uh, the Oilers were unlucky in that they didn't get Tavares, McKinnon, Ekblad, McDavid. But to, to call them unlucky i think is slightly to very ridiculous so anyway no they shouldn't change the odds um it's funny that people are starting to say chicago now though like not just edmonton yeah, no, i think what it is i feel is, like that'd be equally annoying here's what it is they're it's saying fun. that because those they're two teams that have won too much chicago's won too many cups and edmonton's won too many draft lotteries and nobody wants to see either of them do well. When was the last time they were both in the same conversation? Exactly. Probably, um, I honestly, to me, uh, you leave it the way it is. It, the chips fall the way they do. It sucks if Edmonton wins again, but so what? So what? That didn't make them good until Connor McDavid. And that still hasn't made them good. It looks like, th- like this, this year. these are two smash hits, though. Like McDavid, Darlene, no. that's insane. Oh man, how are they gonna screw it up? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see. Well, it's like, oh, we've got Darlene, so we can trade Oscar Clef Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not let's essentially just recreate Team Sweden's defense. Right. Let's get rid of one of them. Yeah, because now it's expendable. Yeah. Now no, we have a piece we can move. No homers. Yeah. No anyway, Swedes. Um. Good times. Good times by all. Uh, this will be, I, I don't, when do you think our next trade is? Uh, what time will the show be uploaded, Jesse? Oh, so yeah, right after the show. Right uploaded. after the show's up? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do we get a, do five we get a call at the latest. <laughs> the trade will be at five at the latest. Uh, I think next week we see all the trades and I think it's a little quiet this weekend. I think nobody's wearing Jordans. So there it is. Jesus. You were mid, you were already there. I just didn't like your pronunciation. <laughs> it's quiet. Quiet. Adam, did I interrupt you a lot this show? <laughs> the show was done, like, Steve. Did I interrupt I... you less than last time? <laughs> the new drinking game is yeah. how many take a shot every time Steve extends the show past what it should. Here's how bad I am. <laughs> I read that tweet, went to the show conscious that that's a thing I do. <laughs> I did it anyway. You know what didn't help? What? Steve working throughout the show and half listening to every story Adam was telling. <laughs> you know what? I thought, the LFR goes up at four. I have to say, I thought that was, you did pretty good. I think you did pretty Thanks, good. Thanks, Dad. I, I know did I did. Yeah, I think you were good. 
Now have your other Advil because I know you got a headache. I do. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to take it? <laughs> I'm just going to flick it. All right. <laughs> That's Feel even worse. Feel his skills, buddy. All right. The cat. We will see you next time. And, hey, we've got some, some big news coming up. We're very excited. We do? We just confirmed something this morning. Oh, yeah. But not... Oh, not all the details you have worked even out. Tease that. Oh, That's I'm funny. teasing it. There's some good stuff coming, guys. We got some great hey, stuff going in the playoffs. I'm really jacked. Gonna happen. You are not gonna believe this. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.